This is my channel's weekly compendium, ending Monday, February 19th, 2024. Case file number 1474, written by PTABS226, The Ring in Real Life. After a night of drinking in college, some friends and I went to a friend's house and watched The Ring on DVD. A week later, at the same time, I stumbled back into my dorm and my TV turned on. I didn't turn it on. It turned on by its mother freaking self. It takes a second for the TV to turn on because it was an older tube TV. I was in the kitchen when I heard the music and then the picture flashed on. It was the very beginning of the death video, the still of the latter. A brick fell out of my pants as I ran to grab the remote to turn the TV off. I grabbed the remote and realized the remote had no batteries, damn. Well, I wasn't going to walk to the TV and turn it off, so I just watched the video. The movie was new enough that it would not have been on TV yet, and I was in campus housing, so we didn't have any premium HBO type channels. With no other option, I watched the entire video, creepy girl and all. It turned out our campus TV station, which would show movies at night, decided to play The Ring. It was just by chance that I walked in at the exact right spot. As for my TV turning on by itself, the TV would turn on whenever I walked into a room and most of the time when someone else walked in. This was one of the first times it turned on by itself, but not the last. It continued for four years and it happened in four different houses and apartments. I still have no explanation for it. Case file number 1475 written by Bandit 6 Actual. A dog, a full moon, and a shared bowl of popcorn. This happened around 1991. It's the middle of the night. I'm standing in my sister's living room and it must be a full moon. Even though it's around 1am and the lights are off, I can see clearly. There's a mixing bowl with popcorn kernels in the bottom, on the floor, in front of the TV. There's also some rental VHS in a pile nearby. I hear a noise and turn around to see my sister's normally very friendly Labrador retriever, looking like Cujo, fangs bared, snarling. Suddenly, there's a bright flash of light and I wake up like I hit the bed from a great height. I think to myself, that was a weird dream. Eventually, I fall back to sleep and in the morning I call my sister, planning to tell her the story. But she preempts me by telling me about the weird thing that happened to them in the night. They woke up to the sound of the dog snarling at about 1am. Her husband thought there was a prowler in the house, got a gun and went to fight the dog. She was standing in the living room snarling. He couldn't see anyone, so he flipped on the light. No one was there. The dog instantly stopped snarling and walked to her bed like nothing had happened. He checked the property and went back to bed. We talked a bit and I found out they watched some rental movies. Of course, we had popcorn. Why? My sister is a little woo-woo at the times, so I decided not to tell her about my night. She lived about 450 miles away, by the way. Case file number 1476, written by Axel Flask. 777, The Impossibly Silent Store. I was running late for work this morning. My wife was tending to our one-year-old who was sick with a cold. She asked if I could stop at the Walgreens down the street to get him some cough medicine. I was in a huge rush but didn't want him to go without it, so I headed over there as quickly as I could. My wife and I were on the phone as I was driving and pulling into the parking lot. The street was busy and packed with cars. As I was walking up to the store, I noticed a woman putting her screaming child into her car. Wife was reminding me which medicine to buy. I checked my phone for the time, that's when it got weird. The second I walked into the store, my phone turned off and the call dropped. The sliding door closed behind me and the entire store was empty. The lighting was different from what I was used to, fluorescent and cold. There was no one at the front and no one in any of the aisles I could see. I turned around to look outside and there were no cars in the street, not even the woman who was just there five seconds ago. I actually said, hello? Twice loudly, feeling like this was some sort of horror movie I was in. The entire store was silent and I went to grab my phone again to film this in case no one believed me. Of course, it won't turn on. I turned the corner down a random aisle and just like that, there's people there. The lighting is different now and warmer. There was even music now. I turn to look at the front and there is a customer mid-transaction with a checker. My phone starts working again and my wife is calling me. She tells me it just went silent and said the call failed. I stood there for a minute and realized there was nothing I could do. I bought the medicine and went on with my day. I don't know if this was a glitch in the matrix, 
coincidental timing, or some weird parallel universe type stuff. All I know is that it was strange as hell, and I didn't really know who to tell this to. Case file number 1477, written by Mark of Shame. The Mercedes that vanished with the storm. Driving home on a stormy day, I see that a side road up to the local golf course is blocked off by a flashing barricade. I also spy a Mercedes parked past the barricades with its hazards on. I stop and walk up to the car to see if they need help. I'm an EMT. I shine my light in the back seat to see a man slumped over apparently asleep. Thinking I've got a few drunks, I move up to the driver window and rap on the glass and shine my light in. The driver is sitting bolt upright, unmoving, staring straight ahead. My window wrapping or light doesn't cause him to blink, flinch or move. I look over and the passenger is slumped forward onto the dash. This begins to creep me out. I call down to the sheriff's station and request a code too. No lights or sirens. Unit up to my location to help me check them out. Doors are locked. While on the phone, I walk back to my truck to get my go bag. I'm on phone with dispatch. She asked me to get the license number for the car just as a PG&E power company cherry picker truck comes tumbling down from up the closed road. I move to go around the truck to get the plate number and the car is gone. I talked to the driver of the truck and he said there was an 80 foot tree down across the road and that he didn't think it'd be open for a day or so. So the question is, the hell did the car go? Tree up one way, barricades down the other. It's kept me a little unsettled when stopping at accidents and hazards since then. Case file number 1478, written by Rocker Chicks Rule. How my debit card defied time and space. In June of 2018, my daughter and I walked up the road a quarter of a mile away to the local Waffle House for breakfast. Since we were walking, I only took a house key and my debit card and placed them in my jeans pocket. After breakfast, we walked up to the cashier with the ticket. I paid for the meal. Then we left and proceeded to walk back home. When we were almost home, I reached into my pants pocket to grab my key to unlock the door and noticed my debit card was not with my key. I panicked. So we turned around before unlocking the door and went back to the Waffle House to see if I left the card with the cashier. We walked quickly back, also looking along the side of the road in case I dropped it. Once we got back to the Waffle House, the cashier said she gave me my card back to me and no one had turned in a card possibly found on the floor. I felt sick, and all I could think of was hurrying back home and calling the credit card company to cancel my card. We proceeded back towards home again and finally made it home. I unlocked the door and walked past the kitchen, and I noticed, from the corner of my eye, a piece of paper folded on the countertop. After opening the paper, I was shocked to discover that it was my receipt from the Waffle House wrapped around my debit card. The card and receipt were back home before I made it home. Just so you know, my daughter was walking behind me when I unlocked the door and entered the house, so she didn't have time to place my card and receipt in the kitchen if it was some sort of prank. What the hell? Case file number 1479, written by Euphoric Client 1075, The Clementine That Broke the Universe. This happened in 2011 or 2012, and I can't talk about it without tearing up because I just don't know. I was in high school sociology class. I sat next to my friend Jane, who was notorious for having a crap ton of snacks every day. Small girl, fast metabolism probably. One of her go-tos were clementines usually bringing one each day and wrapped in a paper towel and kept in her bag, which was like a tote messenger style bag. It stood up on its own and everything. I don't know if that's even relevant. So class is starting and she ate her clementine. I'm annoyed, so I asked her for a slice and we split the clementine. She walked the peel and paper towel to the trash can by our teacher's desk and threw it away. This is all normal. Then she gets back to her desk and reaches down to get her stuff for class and suddenly sits straight up. I'm not sure really how to describe her face except for that she really looked like she saw a ghost. She asked me if she had just eaten her clementine and I'm like yeah? And I look over and there's clearly a clementine wrapped in a paper towel in her bag where it's usually kept. I immediately was like oh, you obviously just mistakenly packed two or didn't eat the one you packed yesterday etc. She was adamant that wasn't the case and went to the trash can. Then she starts reaching in the trash can and sorting through. Trash? <laughs> I'm like Jane, what the hell are you doing? So I go over there and look and sure enough, there's no clementine peel in there. It's just not there. It has been less than a minute since I watched her throw it in this exact trash can. It was one of those little trash cans and we emptied it out. 
By this point, we were losing our minds, sitting on the ground stammering, trying to blame each other for whatever the hell was happening. Our teacher noticed and let us sit out the rest of the class because we were so distraught. The peel was just completely gone. I don't know if it's possible she had a second Clementine in her bag all along, but I know 100% that Clementine number one was eaten and the peel was thrown away. I know it's a small thing, but there really is no explanation. It truly changed my perspective about reality. Case file number 1480, written by Cool Hand Lucas. When Percocet and Neo Collide I got my wisdom teeth out in 2000, right around the time that the original Matrix came out on VHS. I was bombed completely out of my mind on Percocet after coming back from the surgery. I had awful wisdom teeth. My mom basically just dropped me in the bed and went and rented the movie for me because I'd never seen it in theaters. I remember being irritated that the sun through the window was making the TV glare, but being too out of it to get up. A little bit after the black cat glitch in the Matrix scene, I passed out and apparently slept for about 8 hours. The tape in the VHS machine kept rewinding itself and playing over and over. I woke up and the movie was at roughly the same spot as when I passed out, but it was completely dark outside. Zero time lapse for me, completely lost my mind. Started freaking out and screaming because I thought I'd discovered the secret and somebody turned off the sun. I remember crying and trying to explain to my panicked family who had never let me live it down. Case file number 1481 written by Maddox, Toronto's Weird Monkey Mystery. My dad had this little toy monkey that he used to call his favorite child and tease me and my siblings with it. Not in a bad way, but it was really frustrating to us and we spent hours trying to steal it from him. Well anyways, one day we finally got it and threw it into the garbage, after drawing on it and mangling it for a bit. My dad laughed and searched for it a bit, but basically figured we had thrown it out and gave up after a week or so. Anyways, a few years later, when I was about 17, I'm walking down the street in Toronto. I don't live in Toronto. I was just visiting friends and saw this little orange object on the side of the road. When I walk over to it, I pick it up and see that it was the exact same freaking monkey. It even had the same black sharpie lines on it from when we drew all over it. I honestly cannot even come up with the chances of that happening, especially considering our garbage is sent to a local dump and is nowhere near Toronto. Case file number 1482 written by Flatcore, the red lights that never existed. A few years back, I lived in a sober house with a great group of guys that I actually got pretty close to. One night, a good friend that lived in the house with me and I went over to talk to a friend that had relapsed, had a good conversation for about two hours. Around midnight, we decided it was getting late and left. Instead of taking the through way back, we decided to get some Wendy's and take the long way back. After about 20 minutes into our drive, down a road I had been down dozens of times, I suddenly see a light ahead of me turn red and have to come to a fairly quick stop. We both look up and at the same time see a cop taking a right hand turn at the same intersection. We're both a bit relieved, neither of us deep enough into sobriety to shake that innate addict fear of cops. We're sitting there chuckling to ourselves and after 30 seconds, we're both looking up at the light and chatting. A minute goes by and then two and the light is still red, which by this point we both make a comment on how long it's been red. Immediately after this, there's suddenly headlights coming through my rear window and I don't mean they were slowly fading in, they were just there. A large SUV suddenly swerves by, laying on the horn and hollering something out of his window. My friend and I immediately commented something like, look at this jerk blowing a red light and blaming us. And as we both looked up, we realized, there is no red light. Not only is there no red light, there's no lights at all. Above us is an empty intersection, four stop signs and nothing else. We were both so creeped out, we looked at each other. He said, what the frick? and his face was white. We got home after that without incident and never talked about it again. This was almost four years ago. Case file number 1483, written by the Bronze Bear. My teenage nightmare folded into reality. I used to have a recurring dream as a teenager every night for months. I was sitting at a table on the patio of a restaurant. I was out there alone, waiting for my food. A homeless man comes up to the other side of the patio and asks for change. I'm digging in my wallet for a couple dollars. 
Then I hear tires screech and look up to see a crash in an intersection near the restaurant. I run out there to see if I can help and as I run out into the road I get hit by a car. Then I wake up to the impact. After a while the dream stopped and I put it out of my mind. Fast forward to me being 28 and sitting in an on the border restaurant on the patio waiting for food. A homeless guy comes walking out past the restaurant but doesn't stop and ask for change. It makes me think about that dream though and I start to feel uneasy. Shortly after, I hear the tires screech and I see a wreck happen in the intersection near the restaurant. I begin to run out there but stop at the sidewalk and look out towards the oncoming traffic. There was an SUV not slowing down. She was on her phone and blew through the intersection, completely unaware of what had just happened. Ran out after and checked on the people. Thankfully, everyone was fine. Case file number 1484, written by Bran Craw Dog. A man's odyssey through parallel lives. I, male 42, am relatively successful, though not as successful as I should be or as big of a failure as I deserve. I have a great wife, female 34, and two wonderful children, 3 and 5. I went to bed last night a near perfectly happy man. For reference, I had a girlfriend from the ages of 17 to 21 that I remained very close friends with, until I met my wife 10 years ago. Her and I both decided a close friendship was impossible, mostly due to the fact that we were hit or miss on rekindling our relationship for a decade. What I can only account for as a dream completely consumed my day. I remember going to bed in the same house I woke up in with my wife this morning. I was at a gathering with my wife and children and my old girlfriend was there with her now husband. I got up to get a drink and she approached me asking me to go to a back room and enter a closet. She was insistent on me accompanying her. I went inside and this is where it was dreamy. It was almost third person omniscient. I was standing in her parents driveway. We discussed our breakup because she was going to another city for college. But it was like a do over. We watched our conversation and this time I agreed to move in with her. I stepped into my own body 21 years ago and got in my truck and drove home. From that moment, I relived my life as though I moved with her. I looked in the mirror and was 21 again. She was there, narrating the whole thing. She graduated while I worked, and then I went to college while she worked and then we got married. We were at our wedding, celebrating at our reception. I remembered our honeymoon in Mexico. It seemed to move fast, but we had a son, then a daughter. Went on many vacations. We were in love and happy. I had a career completely different than the one I have now. We had an incredibly nice home, friends. I had memories of my new friends and was enjoying the different life. We would lay in bed at night and I'd ask about my current wife and the life she had on the other side. She could take me and show me. Very vivid. I kept thinking, this is a dream. I have to wake up. She insisted it wasn't a dream, and I didn't have the usual dreamlike physical characteristics. I didn't believe it was real, insisted we go to my parents' house to confront them and leave this dream. They looked so happy. In my real life, they got divorced 18 years ago. My formerly incredibly successful brother was living at home. He was a pothead that had no motivation to better himself. I started to remember that about him. It was as if all my real life memories were disappearing and this was my reality now. I kept telling her I didn't believe it. We drove to the house I live in now that I just built and moved into 15 months ago. It was a vacant lot. We drove by the facility I work at and I recognized it but it didn't work there. I couldn't even tell you what I did there. This was becoming very confusing. I thought, I'm gonna wake up any minute. But I never did. I live with this girl. We had a son and a daughter. I can see their faces. I can hear their voices. We watched them grow. The son was in baseball and the daughter in gymnastics. We had pool parties, went on vacations. I'd ask about my other wife and she'd tell me I need to take my medication again. I'd talk to the doctor that this life I remembered was just a figment of my imagination. All of a sudden, I was forgetting about my real life. Years had passed, I couldn't decide what was real and what wasn't. She wasn't narrating our life anymore, it was just my life. I would take the kids to school, to practice, 
come home to my wife who I loved. I kept thinking it had been too long to be a dream. I went back to the doctor and told him what I remembered, and he chalked it up to me being schizophrenic. We struggled through that for years. I had to quit drinking to stop the memories. It was so hard to function some days. I knew I had a family somewhere. My work struggled. I spent all my time trying to find my other wife. Then I found her on Facebook. She lived 1500 miles away. I flew out to see her. I went to her house. She was overweight and depressed. I tried telling her I knew her. I was arrested and after posting bail, I flew back home. My wife was so supportive. I began to realize this life was real and I had imagined the other life. We watched Shutter Island and I was just another nut job that had made it through life somehow. Once I accepted this, I was fine. I didn't have any more problems. My other wife dropped charges and I was back at work without issues. Years later, I have just retired. I'm recounting the days 20 years ago when I thought I had another life. My wife tells me I can. All I have to do is go into our closet. I was confused. She proceeds to tell me that she had gone into the closet that we went into, back at the gathering I used to remember, and I can go back. I felt so confused, I asked her, did you know this the whole time, and you did this to me? She told me she too remembered the gathering. She had gone into the closet and lived her life as though we never split. She said she made it until I died at the age of 93. She came back and got me. Now I'm losing my mind again. I'm old. I have lived nearly 50 years with this woman. I don't really even remember my old life. I remember my original kids names, but not even what they look like. She tells me we can go back, but if I want, we never have to return to the closet and we can live the life we have together. I got up and walked to the closet, walked inside and walked back out, into the gathering from the beginning, as if I'd never left. My original wife was there. We left and came home with our kids. We went to bed and I didn't say a word about what happened. This morning it was surreal driving to work. I felt like I was driving to the wrong place. It took me until 8am sitting at my desk to accept this reality. I remember so many vivid details. I don't know what life I'm in. I am happy. I have my now wife and my now life. Kinda wish I had the other life's bank account though. But I feel like I've lived twice. I don't want to go back to be with my girlfriend, but I do want to know what happened to everyone I knew for so many years. Like 99% of my life has returned, but the 1% that is different is there. I remember two pass. My wife listened and gave me a big hug and told me she's glad I chose her. But did I? I think I did. I felt so much wiser at work today, so much more mature. Like I had lived before and got to do it all over again and I have much more confidence in my decisions. I can't find any loopholes in my memory. Other than that, I don't remember who won the World Series or Super Bowls in the other life. Nothing that stands out that this was a figment of my imagination. Case file number 1485, written by So Stupid 246 Writing from the Unknown Something was written on my grocery list that I could not have written ahead of time, and yet there it was in my handwriting, and it's driving me crazy how it got there. Long story short, when I start running low on household things, I start making a list. I will add to it over the next few days, so by the time I get to grocery shopping, the list is almost done. Then the night before, I head to the store. I go on the grocery store app to load any coupons I want or need. So I'm on the app and I see a coupon for Blue Buffalo Cat Treats. It's not a brand I normally buy, but I load the coupon anyway and figured I'll buy them for my cat. I go to my grocery list to add blue cat treats to the list. Yet my list, which had 15 items written, had the words blue cat treats already written as the third item. I just stared at it, totally confused. It's my handwriting, and since it's the third item written, that means I wrote it several days ago. Again, I never buy this brand. No one else lives with me, so no one else could have written it. I did not go on the app days before to notice the coupon so I am completely puzzled as to how I already wrote blue cat treats down. I had absolutely no memory of writing it, and no way of knowing there was a coupon for it. Case file number 1486, written by Pizza247. Did we witness a space-time slip in the park? 
My husband and I were walking our dog in a very busy and large urban park. We have lived in large cities our entire lives. We are very used to and accustomed to being surrounded by a lot of different types of people. In short, it takes a lot for something to phase us. We've seen a lot. We were along a busy path in this large city park, with a lot of people around, and we had our dog. This man coming walking towards us starts making eye contact with both of us almost immediately. He stops next to us and says, Hey boss, how's it going? And puts his hands out to shake our hands. We look at him because he's acting like he knows us, so we're a bit embarrassed. Trying to remember who he is, we hesitate, and then all of a sudden he says, Why are you stalking me? I keep seeing you guys. Why are you following me? And says it once or twice more as we quickly walk away from him. We walk past him, and he walks past us, going opposite directions. We make it to a point to wait exactly 5 seconds. I actually count to myself 1 through 5 before I look back to make sure he did indeed go away and isn't following us. My logic was, I wanted to ignore him in case he was dangerous and sort of diffuse it. But I also wanted to make sure he wasn't following us, as he started to get aggressive a bit in his tone. I turn around and he is nowhere to be seen, I mean literally nowhere. I can't exactly describe the area, but it was pretty open. Even if he sprinted in any direction for 5 seconds fast, you would still have seen him at least somewhere. It was also open and there weren't really any trees or things he could hide behind. I'm sure you may be reading this thinking he was a crazy on the street that can be found in any city. Here's what we found really jarring, maybe not each thing separately but put together. He was dressed extremely well. Yes, yes, I know, those with mental illness and or those living on the street can look quite presentable. I'm not trying to be rude, but he looked wealthy, like old money wealthy, super preppy and well-dressed, about mid-fifties, almost awkwardly tall, maybe six foot six. People have screamed at us before on the street, and have never seen this put together. Again, not impossible, just a bit odd, honestly. He was so sure in his conviction that he knew us, and we were stalking him. The look in his eyes was terrifying. I can't exactly describe it, but he seemed just so sure. We have no idea who he was, and no one looked at what was going on, which by itself wasn't odd. People in my city ignore people shouting and antics all the time without a care in the world, for better or worse. But when I tell you everyone around didn't even glance in our direction, people may ignore what's going on typically, but they'll walk the other way, not into whatever is going on. Moreover, plenty of dogs within sight didn't even seem to look at this man screaming. He had a bizarre, surprising accent. Again, not by itself odd, but adds to the weirdness. I believe it was Russian. He vanished. Both me and my husband turned around after 5 seconds and agreed he was nowhere to be found. There was nowhere logically for him to be found. We realized after the fact that he appeared seemingly out of nowhere when he was walking towards us. Anyway, this was so odd. It's like he appeared out of nowhere from a different time and was so sure in his conviction. To the point where we were both like, was he at the coffee shop we were both at earlier? Did we indeed walk the same way to the park? That doesn't make sense, he was walking towards us. It's really hard to describe over text. But he appeared as quickly as he left and no one around us seemed even remotely bothered. We've had people on the street chase us, threaten us at knife point, throw bottles at us. We've been called homophobic slurs multiple times. Quite frankly, this was just as freaky if not scarier than all of those. All due to the fact that I can't come up with an explanation, especially for the vanishing. My husband is a science guy, and he believes in absolutely nothing that isn't evidence-based. He's sort of my skeptical pulse for things, but I can tell even he was completely thrown off. Quesantifin 1474 The Ring in Real Life the Ring is an excellent, creepy style movie as a teenager, but going back and watching it again, I don't know, I didn't get the same vibe. I don't know if anyone else has done that. I guess it applies for a lot of movies that you see as a teenager or as a child. You go back and rewatch it and it just doesn't hit the same way. Your mind's different, so it makes sense. You are not the same person you were back then. Specifically to this glitch, my, th my guess is the human body, some electrical fields generated by it, can affect electronics. If you want to call it our aura, or our spirit, our soul, whatever you want to call it. Some people, they simply pass by electronics and it messes with them. Streetlights, TVs, radios, cell phones. Their mere presence produces an electrical charge in the air. 
Now, this range is limited, so it doesn't affect everything, you know, in their entire city. It's almost like having an allergy and not even realizing it, and you keep eating the same foods. Well, you have to take steps to guard against this. I'm not sure exactly what you would do. Wrap yourself in tinfoil? <laughs> not to protect yourself, but to protect others. Hmm. Okay, so let's file 1475. A dog, a full moon, and a shared bowl of popcorn. I think this is as simple as a kind of spiritual walking, spiritual astral projection while dreaming. You access your sister's life, even if it was more jumbled and interpreted by your brain, and then you saw it in your dreamlike state. You never physically went there, of course, but you didn't have to. And to my knowledge, this isn't even really outside the realm of normality. Even the CIA has conducted tests to verify that remote viewing is a thing. And if remote viewing is a thing, well, how could that be? I mean, you would have to be using your soul to stay in the physical realm, your body's still there, but, but your soul is miles away. 450 in this case. Okay, so file 1476. The impossibly silent store. This I'll call the limbo scene, where you are trapped in a universe that is a facsimile. Like in the Matrix, where to load up things that are necessary, like an armory, or a training program fighting against Morpheus, you're creating a fake, fake world, <laughs> if you will. And there's no other people there, or probably no one else, maybe a couple handful that are in transition as well, but that's just a hypothesis. It might just be created individually for each person making a long, long transition between universes. So you're stuck in limbo. Everything there is real in a physical sense, but it's a facsimile. It's not real in the same sense that it's only real in the effect that it can have an impact on other human beings, other sentient beings with souls. And so in that, in that respect, it's not real. Also, I wonder, if a soul transition happens, can this create an electronic interference? My guess is yes, and that could explain why the phone was all jumbled out, even on the other end in the new universe. It was being prepared to receive a new soul. And now time for the poem of the day. In the tapestry of love, a complex design, a dance of hearts, a rhythm so fine. Yet difficulties arise, like storms above, testing the strength of this thing called love. In the garden of passion, blooms desire, but thorns of doubt can fuel love's fire. Communication falters, like a broken dove, navigating the maze, the challenge of love. Misunderstandings, like shadows, creep. Silent whispers, secrets to keep. Emotions entangled, like hands in a glove. Oh, the intricate puzzle, the struggle of love. Trust, a fragile bridge, spans the divide. A delicate balance on which we stride. Mistakes like thunder echo from above. A turbulent journey, the battlefield of love. Time, a healer, yet a relentless thief. Stealing moments, causing joy and grief. Patience, a virtue, a gift from above, an elusive virtue in the tempest of love. Yet through the tempest, stars still gleam, a testament to love's resilient dream. For in the heart's embrace we find a trove, a treasure worth the difficulties of love. So let us navigate the intricacies of the sea, with open hearts and empathy. For in overcoming trials we rise above, a testament to the enduring power of love. And what about you? Do you have someone in your life that you love, even if it isn't romantic, a good close friend, or even your parents? Anyone. Case notes about 1477. The Mercedes that vanished with the storm. This seems like the universe can be a sleight of hand master. It's like a magic trick. Look one way, and then in the next moment, Schrodinger's cat kicks in, and the car is gone. I think it's a kind of trick the universe is playing on us. Not malicious, but trickery. Okay, so let's file 1478. How my debit card defied time and space. Again, it's like Schrodinger's cat. You both existed back home after returning and didn't. But until you opened the door in this reality, it wasn't solidified. So the door was out of sight, and the debit card and the receipt it was wrapped in were inside and weren't. It all depends on perspective and if the waveform has collapsed. If no one is in there, well, just didn't collapse. And I think it's more to do with soul perception. So, a lot of things can interact with matter, but not necessarily collapse the waveform. It's like the question, 
Does a tree make a sound in the forest if no one else is around to hear it? Probably not. I don't think the universe even renders it in that case. Quesant Sofa, 1479. The Clementine that broke the universe. So quite simply, this is the best kind of glitch. The kind of glitch where food is reproduced. Maybe stolen from other universes and the Mies in those universes won't have it, but I'm okay with that. Screw them. If I get over there, I'll be unhappy. Or I guess I won't, because I won't even really care. I mean, it'll, it'll already have passed and happened, so who cares? <laughs> I guess, though, it means that they can steal from me and this universe, so, hmm. Maybe I shouldn't, but Subway is too tempting. If I order three footlongs, which is a standard affair for me, good little snack, I would love to get four, or even six. Boy, that'd be a dream. <laughs> uh, the Great Universal Heists. And now time for the quote of the day. Anger is a puppeteer that makes your mouth work faster than your mind. Evan SR. We've all been there before, right? When we're in a fight with someone, or just an argument that gets heated, and then we realize, oh, I just said something I don't actually mean. The problem is then, typically ego takes over, pride, and you can't admit that what you said was incorrect, it's not really what you meant. Maybe after the fact, but never in the moment, right? <laughs> Very difficult to say in the moment. Well, the fight is still going on, and you said you said something mean, so they say something mean back, and fire begets fire, right? Violence begets violence. Applies to anything. Fighting fire with fire generally doesn't work well. Same thing with anger. Fighting anger with anger doesn't work well. And I'm not saying that you're a bad person if you do it, because we're all human. No one's perfect, <laughs> right? I'm certainly not. It bears saying that we should try to be. Even though we can never measure up to perfection, we should still aim to. Shoot for the stars. Be happy for the moon. Que sont 1480. When Percocet and Neo collide, do VHS normally loop? I can't remember. I know I used to watch movies all the time on VHS. I remember uh, the first one I think was, um, what was it called? It's the one with, uh, Cartoon elephants? Damn, I wish I could remember. I forgot completely, but I'm sure people will know what I'm talking about. <laughs> it was pretty common back then in the 90s. Anyways, I don't think they automatically rewind. Maybe there's a setting on some VHS players that can enable that. Anyways, I don't think that's a glitch. I think waking up in the exact moment that you fell asleep is pretty strange, though. It could all be just a weird coincidence. I could buy that for this one. But it is also interesting that it happens in the original concept of the glitch in the Matrix with the black cat, Déjà Vu. Case answer file, 1481. Toronto's weird monkey mystery. So was this a fatherly mega prank? The biggest prank in the universe? Your father found the monkey toy that you both had savagely destroyed or mangled after the fact? And he didn't tell you and he kept it secret in his back pocket proverbially speaking, and then dropped it on you when he knew you were going to go to Toronto, in an area that he knew you'd travel in. So if that was a prank, I have to say, props to the dad. But I'm not convinced. That seems too much. Even I wouldn't go that far. Even if I was a spirit, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> and again, there's no payoff. That would only work if I did something that crazy. I would have to tell them, eventually, after a day or two at least. But the fact that that didn't happen, well... Some will is involved, but this seems too specific. And it's weird because it doesn't really seem like a prank either if there is an extra dimensional will involved. But why return it at all? I'm stumped on this one. Okay, so it's a file 1482. The red lights that never existed. I would qualify this as a real life Twilight Zone level glitch. And most glitches are pretty small relative to this one. Plus, this also qualifies as the quack standard, because there's another person that simultaneously notices the glitch. Right there with you. How would you react if that happened? You're just at a light, everything is normal, you see the physical light there. Not just the light emanating towards you from the actual bowl, but actually the whole, the whole thing. The pole itself, rising from the ground. And then, one moment, you look away, and the next, it's just gone. And you have a witness with you. That is so extraordinary, it's mind-boggling. I don't know how I would react to anything like that. The glitches I've experienced, so tiny, losing a tennis ball, you can still, in the back of your mind, just say, okay, well, it, 
bounced away, found a hole in the wall and just went down below or something, it doesn't make sense, but you can rationalize it away. But there's no way to rationalize this. This is a glitch in the matrix. Point blank, no one can deny that. If anyone can deny this one, then <laughs> I don't know. Okay, Sansa 1483. My teenage nightmare folded into reality. I would say probably a guardian angel influencing your dreams, guiding you towards a specific future from the quantum time foam, you could say. Visualizing the time foam. It's like visualizing the multiverse. There's different possibilities, and they all are real, but you only get to experience one of them consciously. At any rate, I think the homeless man was actually a guardian angel, or a human being being possessed by your guardian angel, to try to reinforce what was happening. He needed to give you that context, so you knew. Because you were going to rush out, right? <laughs> but then, because it was so similar to your dream, you didn't. And the woman behind the SUV didn't kill you. So you saved her conscious, and you saved yourself, of course. Even though, yeah, you would have gone to a different universe from quantum immortality. In fact, I think saving the woman from the guilt of having killed someone is probably the biggest takeaway from this. And yes, she should not have been driving carelessly on her phone or whatever. That's true and wrong. But I think the guilt of killing someone is just too much. I wouldn't wish that on anyone. And now time for the joke of the day. Dad is listening to his daughter say her prayers before bedtime. She says, God bless mommy and God bless daddy and God bless grandma and goodbye grandpa. He asks her, why did you say that? I don't know, I just felt like saying it. The next day, grandpa drops dead. Wow, thinks dad. That's an odd coincidence. A month later at bedtime, the daughter says, God bless mommy and daddy and goodbye grandma. Sure enough, the next day, grandma breathes her last earthly breath. The dad realizes this is more than a coincidence, but he is not sure what to do. He doesn't want to disturb his wife by telling her. Grandma and grandpa were her parents. Months go by, and one night, the man is listening to his daughter saying her prayers at bedtime. God bless mommy. She turns her head and looks straight at him. And goodbye, daddy. What? Are you sure, honey? She nods. The man's heart begins racing, and he breaks out in a sweat. He is so upset, he can't sleep at all that night. The next day, he goes off to work, but locks himself in his office. He takes the phone off the hook, cancels all his meetings, and awaits the inevitable. He stays at work past five, because he feels secure there. He watches the hours tick by. Finally, it is midnight, and drenched in sweat, he realizes he has cheated death. He drives home, drenched in sweat, and with all his nerves frazzled. His wife is up and waiting for him. Where the hell have you been today? He replies, Don't shout, I've had an absolutely miserable day. His wife then says, You had a miserable day? I'm the one who had a miserable day. First, the milkman drops dead on the steps. Oh. <laughs> Dad did die, but he wasn't the father. Oh my god. <laughs> That's a good one. That was a long joke, but I liked it. The mother was playing the field. Maybe she didn't even know either. <laughs> okay, Salt Sofa, 1484. A man's odyssey through parallel lives. Ah, uh, yes. So this is the type of story and experience, really, that parallels so well to sci-fi, too. So, of course, I'm thinking of TNG's Inner Light. I've mentioned it a few times on this uh, channel because stories like this keep popping up. Perhaps, again, it's one of those things where sci-fi borrows from real life. So these stories aren't just suddenly happening, where people wake up and or visit a closet, which is a very strange uh, detail to this story that I haven't heard before, but often people will go to bed and enter a dreamlike state that becomes more and more lucid, but they can't wake from it. And eventually, e even if it's days, weeks, months, years, that fiction, you could call it, becomes their real life. They never see it happening in the moment. It's very gradual, piece by piece, until they are completely consumed by the new life and their old life has been suppressed. Now, what is real? What is fake? Ask Morpheus. I don't know. <laughs> Was this a simulation malfunction? Did you hop to a different world, but in a transient sense where your soul was zigzagging between them back and forth? Maybe. Maybe this was actually just happening in your mind. It wasn't a glitch in the matrix itself, more a glitch in your own brain. But if that's the case, it does happen to other people relatively frequently in terms of how often we can get these stories. Of course, 
If you're talking about how often this happens to the general scope of the entire planet, it's very rare. Certainly, I've never experienced anything like that. I've had somewhat relatively lucid dreams, but even then, not really. Nothing even 0.001% of this. Have you ever had a dream similar to that? Maybe some people experience a single day. I've had more stories like that too, where they experience a single day, it feels so real, and then they wake up. Maybe it describes the future day, or a day that will come in a few weeks or months, or even a year or so down the road. I've had a story like that too. But yeah, needless to say, stories like this are incredibly fascinating because it appeals to our nature to experience something else, different. The grass is always greener, right? Of course, that's not always true, is it? It's more individual pieces of a different life that might be better, like in this case, your other self's bank account. <laughs> yeah, shame that didn't transfer over. And now time for the quote of the day. Poets have been mysteriously silent on the subject of cheese. J.K. Chesterton. Well, I have a very specific and simple reason for that, because poets are in touch with feelings, and often in touch with ethics very well, philosophers as well. And they're all very well aware that cheese is of the devil. No, seriously. Why do people like it? I will never understand that. Okay, so on so far, 1485. Writing from the unknown. So, let's be honest here. Cats do have special powers. Intellect from the deep dark void, you could say. And they do know what they like. So, was this cat somehow mimicking your own handwriting? I wouldn't go that far. In fact... The only thing I can think of is that you somehow sleep wrote this because you remembered buying it and the cat liked it before. It's very strange. Uh, maybe a guardian angel somehow looking out for your cat? Do cats have guardian angels? Well, that's a question. <laughs> okay, sounds a file 1486. Did we witness a space time slip in the park? This is a story that I could believe is some elaborate prank. Mainly because it's not about revealing it to the person that is pranked. It's about Instagram and TikTok clout. Where people are doing that these days. They're twisting people's minds, but never even telling them about it. No. They just go on about their day. I like those kinds of pranks when the person being pranked is told. Otherwise, you're just messing with their brain for views, which is kind of mean, isn't it? <laughs> Mess with their mind a bit, but then make sure they know your mind's okay. <laughs> Now, if it is a man stuck out of time or out of phase with this universe, that's also possible. We have all kinds of parallel universe visits that are transient, and people get confused when coming over initially. It is almost like being out of phase with the universe you're in now, because you're not from it. And now time for the quote of the day. What some people mistake for the high cost of living is really the cost of high living. Doug Larson. Okay, so I think there's two, there's truth to both sides in that Yes, the cost of living is rising pretty quickly because of inflation, the Federal Reserve, there's so much more currency in the economy now. You can see the chart of the M2 money supply on the Federal Reserve website. St. Louis, I believe. Anyways, you can see it spike up. Now, part of that I think is because of how they, they started counting it, but there's still a dramatic increase, even in the last uh, five years, especially after the uh, pandemic and all that. <laughs> Whatever your thoughts are on that, it's very clear that there was a lot of money printed or digitally created and infused into the economy. And when you have a bunch of money, new currency imprinted like that, minted, well, if people use it, then prices will rise. Now, sometimes there's a delay because people don't immediately uh, use it. And when it's created, sometimes it stays in the stock market and investment and all that. Banks use it first. Whoever uses it first gets the full value of it, then it trickles out to everyone else eventually, and then prices rise. Especially things that people use a lot, like rent and utilities, food, all that kind of stuff, gas insurance, etc. At any rate, not to get too boring <laughs> with the dry economics, needless to say, prices are rising. But also, there are ways to mitigate that. If you live more simply, make your food at home. If you go out to McDonald's or Uber Eats, your bill, your bill for food is going to be astronomical. But if you eat at home, it's not so bad. Especially if you eat mostly whole foods. Get lots of potatoes, rice, beans. If you're going to eat meat, try to eat infrequent and get the good quality stuff. Now, that is more expensive, but it's better for you. 
It's better for the animals too, so there's that. There are steps to take, and I wouldn't say it's exactly high living, but yeah, it's all about relativity, right? Relative to what we're used to, it's normal living. But say relative to 50 years ago, 70 years ago, no, it's even modest living today is high living compared to back then. I've seen this Amazon pod that you can buy, a home for $20,000 that ships in a uh, giant, almost like cargo container. But it is a real home and it actually unfolds out into like, I don't know, I think it was 300 or 400 square foot. So if you buy rural land for 20000 for an acre, you can probably get cheaper than that. Then the home, then get a compost toilet, some wood, chop down your own firewood, get some solar panels, batteries. For 50000 clear, you have your own home paid off, no mortgage, nothing. And yeah, it's not luxury, but you have your own base of operations that no one can take from you. Isn't that the dream? Even and you can build on it over time. So you don't have to start in a conventional home that's $300,000, $400,000 now. No. Think smaller and think in incremental steps. You don't have to do a giant home initially. Like the video, subscribe, hit the bell. Kinetic Symphony signing off.